We're just gonna wait for a couple minutes. Let some folks jump on here. I can fix this a little bit. There we go. Yep. I'll let you keep coming, let you keep coming. Hey, Sue and Heidi, Catalina. Um, just gonna wait for a few more minutes. Gail, Olga, Susan. Hey, Missouri, Heidi, Marge, Nellie. Helen, good. Isa from Poland. Awesome. Come on. Just gonna let, wait a few more minutes. We're gonna um, please share this. Um, and um, dealing with some interesting things right now, aren't we? Aren't we? Yeah. Wow. Okay. So. Hey, Kim. DC, I didn't know you. That's right, you guys did move to DC. I forgot about that. Olga from Italy. Good, we're just gonna wait a few more minutes. Just, just a little bit, just to let some folks jump on here. And then, um, yeah, we'll get going. Hey, Roger. All right, kind of an odd time of day. Somebody said, do you do this at any other time, you know, or a specific time? Hey, Joshua, South Africa, who and Nancy. Um, good, 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 good. Well, I'm gonna go ahead and get started uh, pretty shortly, it looks like. We're just gonna have a smaller crew to start with and they can watch later. They'll say, I missed it and came in late. Hey, Do Dolores, good. All right. Hey, Tracy. Dukhan Lekker. Good, that's wonderful. <laughs> you guys are like, what are you talking about? We have a friend from South Africa. I grew up in South Africa. My last name is actually South African. My dad is from South Africa. So that's where that comes from. Good. Um, he'll be 90 tomorrow. 90 years old. Wow. Anyways, okay, so I wanna um, share just a few things with you um, uh, that I think are very important right now. Uh, basically, the big question I wanna, wanna put out there is, where are we now? What is going on? And uh, I think it's very important that we understand that um, there are things that the Lord is doing that you cannot um, simply give into. You know, I have, I've been um, functioning in prophetic stuff for, for a while now. And um, as a result of that, I have um, really gotten a little appalled with some of the various things that have been considered or called prophetic. Uh, when you go through the word, it's amazing how many of the words that are given actually occur. Um, they don't just get pushed aside. They don't just get um, redefined as, well, this is what it really meant. Um, um, they don't uh, very often, it did happen a couple times, but they don't very often get thwarted or come against. Um, and that's both Old and New Testament. And so when I begin looking at some of the things that are happening in the world and um, the people consider circumstances in order to validate a prophetic word, and um, they're looking at the natural to validate the spiritual, it doesn't work that way. Um, that when God speaks something, you actually 
uh, God is going to do something. And I've shared before on this post, but I'm going to go to a different place to, today, but, but I've shared before on this post how, how God with Jairus, um, he, he said, don't worry, she's just sleeping. She wasn't sleeping, she was dead. Um, how the same thing occurred with Lazarus. And in fact, uh, that on both those occasions, um, Jesus was late um, to the party. Um, and um, I think that one of the biggest things that we have to understand is that when this whole thing began, and you might recall that I mentioned in some of the earliest posts uh, re in recent days, in the past month, um, that I've shared very specifically um, that these things could proceed all the way to the inauguration um, and possibly passed. I don't know how that could happen, but I, I'm not one to judge what the Lord might or might not do. Uh, we have heard all kinds of things coming out. I, when I talked to Timothy Sherman previously, um, uh, earliest, the earliest conversation, um, there were things that were happening at the inauguration time that were the most volatile. Um, so I know some of you think it's volatile now, but the things that we were talking about um, last March um, was that actually that would probably be uh, an extremely volatile time. I actually had given a word that there would be uh, some sort of engagement. Uh, you can look up the pl uh, plumb line 2020 um, under my notes. And, uh, and read the entire prophetic word that I gave on December 31st, 2019. And then there I mentioned a few things that were very specific, but I said that this engagement will be short-lived because of the church, because of the church. And so I think it's very important that you begin understanding that we have a lot to carry. I've had some individuals who've been very angry with me very angry with me. Um, uh, they're like, why haven't you backed down yet? You just don't want to be, you know, you don't want to admit it. And it's like, I don't have to admit it. I, 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 there's nothing to admit at this juncture. I, I've heard the Lord and you listen to the Lord. You speak for the Lord. Um, I am not their advocate. Um, I am responsible to the words that God has given to me. Um, the Lord spoke to me just a little bit ago. In fact, I wasn't gonna do this. And then he said, no, I want you to do one right now. And, uh, and I heard him say, stir the pot, it's time. And um, I was like, what do you mean stir the pot? It's time. He said, stir the pot, Danny. He said, uh, the pot is stagnant. He said, things have fallen to the bottom um, and the top is all scummy and, and people are letting themselves become numb to the fact that um, that things are happening around them. They don't understand that they're not supposed to let this happen to them, that they should not become be becoming numb, that they need to be instant in prayer and instant in hearing and responsive to the Lord and, and not just to simply forward things, but actually hear things that they will write. I'm calling on those of you who are scribes, begin writing, begin writing. Um, and I'm not just talking about Facebook posts. I'm talking about begin writing, begin writing those things that God has put inside of you. I'm, I'm speaking to those of you who are prophetic, begin releasing the prophetic words of the Lord. And, um, and, and because it's time, and that has been one of the, one of the things that God has used in my life for, whew, 15, 20 years where he keeps saying, it's time, it's time, it's time. What that means is that it's the it's time. It's the pleroma time. It's the time where the fullness of things have come together, where all the fullness of wickedness has risen in the earth, but not just the fullness of wickedness. It's been the fullness of everything, that the church has actually reached a point where it can overcome what the, what the enemy uh, is doing. Do not forget the verse in Romans that says, um, that very soon the God of peace will crush Satan under your feet. This is to the church. This is to you that, that actually God is calling you in this hour to be the ones that will crush the, satan the satanic words, the satanic fuel that is there. Where does it come from? Well, it backs all the way back to Genesis chapter two, where Satan actually says, the serpent, 
He said, did God say? That is the first error that was ever responded to that resulted in the fall of humanity. It was the question, was it God that said it? Was it really God that said it? Are you sure God said it? The question was there. We don't know the circumstances that Eve was walking through at that particular moment. All we know is that the enemy was very close to her and said, are you sure God said that? Did God really say that? Her failure, her willingness to take the fruit didn't just result in her fall, but it resulted in the fall of her husband, both of them together, but also the fall of all of humanity. But there's good news. There's such good news because it says, as in Adam, all die, which is what happened on that day. So in Christ, all are made alive. In other words, that failure that they, they experienced in Genesis chapter two, has been undone and God is desirous now of releasing on the church. Yes, God said, yes, we don't have any doubts. God is God. God is not, God is not driven by voting machines. He's not, listen, it is God's dominion. <laughs> it is God's earth. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. That, that what God is doing, God, he will reign forever and ever. Not any other king, not any other president. I don't, I don't care where the scrutiny is coming from. And I realize we have people that are, that are, that are undoing some things that were saying things that were said um, a couple days ago, or maybe it was yesterday by a Fox News guy on, on, on a, an attorney. I think her name is Sydney. Um, and she had mentioned something uh, about that we have this evidence. And he's like, well, why doesn't she present it? It was like, duh, are you an idiot? She's an attorney. She, she can't give evidence to you as the news media who would just thwart it. She's doing that for a judge. And yet there's many believers who followed suit. And they're like, where's the evidence? Where's the evidence? Well, I believe that God will raise the evidence at the right time because I believe right now he's exposing everything. I've told you this from the beginning. God is exposing things. This is not an issue about two men running for office. This is an, this is an issue about God unveiling, unveiling evil and wickedness and exposing it. And let me tell you where he's beginning to expose it. He's beginning to expose it even in the church. That's why we have some people who've just flaked out. They actually believe that, that, that uh, a different administration, well, let me put it this way, that the administration that's willing to kill babies and promote lifestyles that are not godly, gay, homosexual, uh, lesbian, um, transgender, all these, and, and, and an identity crisis that, 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 uh, that those who would promote that kind of agenda actually are, uh, are the ones that God is on, that they're righteous. That is an ungodly belief system. And they are sadly sadly mistaken and deluded. And, um, and to me, that is a major issue because that is the worship of Baal. That is the worship of Ashtoreth. That, that is the worship of Venus. That is, there, there are so many gods that, that are given to that kind of vice. But our God doesn't want that. And I'm not saying we need a Christian in office. I've never said that. I, you know, it, it's better. Proverbs says that when the righteous rule, it, it, it's well, it does well for your, for your nation. But the rea reality is, is that uh, we've had people who have not known God and they've been, they've been just. They've been relatively good in many respects. But the reality is, is that what God wants is he wants righteousness in our lives. And those who promote unrighteousness? I don't know about you guys, but I'm pretty sick of media. I'm pretty sick of, of the movies that have come out. It's amazing how they have to introduce um, uh, 
the uh, the agenda of of a very very minor part of the population and 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 promote it like it's normal. It's not normal. It's abnormal. Romans says it's abnormal. It says that they've been they've given away their lusts to what's unnatural. And we live there. This is the world we're living in. This is the society we're living in. And this is the nation we're living in. And so all we can hold on to at this juncture is God. Did God say? I want to tell you once again, I believe I heard the Lord very clearly say that Trump will again be president for another four years. I believe that he said it would be a landslide. People are looking, they're going, there's no way it's a landslide. Well, it depends on what you mean by a landslide. Um, if this gets to Congress and there are 31 states to, what is it, 19? That's a landslide. If it's the millions of votes that evidently have been introduced and they're removed because they're false, they're dead people, they're all kinds of things, and they're removed, it will be a landslide. I have no doubts. Still, this is in now over two weeks. <laughs> I don't have doubts. Why? Because God said. Has God said? God has said. We're not going there. We're not going there. And so just as, a, as an update for you guys, prepare yourselves. Prepare your minds for action. The, the enemy prowls around like a roaring lion, seeking who he may devour. How is he going to devour you? He will devour you through deception. Deception to me is, is the worst thing in the world because the people who are deceived don't realize they're deceived. Deception's really bad. And so it's important that, that we, we not be deceived. It's important that we, we listen. We have a constant ear to, to what the Lord is saying. It's, it's very important that you listen to believers and not unbelievers. It's very important that you listen to those who are believing believers and not unbelieving believers. You know, those who once said but now say, those who once declare, but now, de but now undeclare or declare, that we have to get away from that. We absolutely have to get away from that. And we need to tune in very clearly to what the Lord's saying and, um, and not be moved by, uh, by the, the situation that is happening all around you, because it's gonna get worse. The din is gonna get louder, um, the things that are going to happen are going to be worse. Uh, you know, this nation's presenting itself to another lockdown in a weird way. And it's like, we, we just locked down. I, I'm blown away by how many believers are lo just, uh, well, we got we to gotta be careful because, you know. And it's like, you may die from martyrdom before you die from COVID, man. Um, I hope not. <laughs> That's not my hope. But the reality is, is that the, uh, you may die in a car wreck. You may die for, uh, you know, a, a, a dear friend, their family just died a few nights ago. The reality is, is that, it, and it wasn't COVID. God has a call on your life. And your call in this moment is to believe, to be a believing believer. You have an awesome day. Jesus loves you.